okay now uh, let's take up uh, p7-7 uh, preparing a performance uh, report uh, use the flexible budget prepared in 7-6 for the 31,000 unit level and the actual operating results listed below for the 31,000 unit level prepare performance uh, report list the major reasons why the actual operating income at 31,000 units differs from the master budget operating income at 30,000 units in figure 7-12. Given the level at which the company operated, how was its cost control? So we are now given the following items, uh, including sales, direct materials for lumber and paint, direct labor in the three departments, variable factory overhead, variable selling and administrative expenses, fixed factory overhead, and fixed selling and administrative expense. So the number one requirement is to prepare performance report. Now, uh, usually a performance report uh, that is uh, prepared at the end of uh, a given period by comparing the budgeted amounts with the actual amounts. Now, this is uh, prepared by uh, a department head for his uh, department, and uh, at the same time, it will show whatever variance, uh, which is either favorable or unfavorable. So, uh, given the 31,000 units uh, activity or capacity level sales at 150 uh, per unit, so we have now the budget and the actual amounts uh, given. Uh, and the variance since, again, the actual amount exceeds the budgeted amount, so the variance is favorable. Then, for the variable expenses, we have direct materials, uh, and uh, here we have the actual amounts uh, given. Uh, direct material shows an unfavorable variance pain. Again, an unfavorable variance. Direct labor for the cutting, assembly uh, departments, and uh, the painting uh, department. Uh, we have now the uh, rates per unit and uh, given the budgeted amounts and the actual amounts. Then for the variable factory overhead at 4.18 per unit, that's your budgeted amount and uh, the actual amount. Then variable selling and administrative uh, expense uh, given. So the variable selling and the uh, administrative uh, expense here we have your uh, uh, rate 25.79 per unit with the budget and the actual amounts giving a favorable variance so the total variable expense and uh, we compare this with the amount of uh, sales so again sales uh, with the budgeted amount and uh, the actual amount, we are going to deduct the variable uh, spend. So the difference, uh, the contribution margin, showing a favorable variance of 147,065 because the actual amount exceeds the budgeted amount. Again, we are now uh, using an income uh, item here and uh, we deduct the fixed uh, factory overhead with an unfavorable variance and the fixed selling and administrative expense with the uh, totals so the difference between the contribution margin and the total fixed expense we now have the operating income now that's uh, the first uh, requirement for a performance report.
then uh, we have to list major reasons why the actual operating income differs from the master budget operating income at 30,000 units. The master budget operating income at the 30,000 unit level was uh, 1,725,815. Whereas the actual operating income at the 31,000 unit level was 1,966,610. This difference of 240,795 was caused mostly by the difference between the actual sales revenue and the master budget sales revenue selling 1000 units uh, difference because here we are using the capacity level of 31000 units so you have now 1000 units more than uh, the budgeted and selling the units at an average selling price of 154.84 dividing 4,800 that's the amount of actual sales by 31,000 units as compared to the budgeted selling price of 150 per unit its cost was uh, in the case of uh, requirement 3 given the level at which the company operated how was its cost control? Its cost control was not especially good. Total variable expenses, which are the ones that the company has the most control over, were 2,935 unfavorable. Most of the variable manufacturing expenses were unfavorable, whereas variable selling expenses were favorable now that's with regards to question number three okay next uh, we go to problem uh, seven does nine a flexible budget for factory overhead now uh, the rec we have uh, uh, different requirements for this uh, so we now begin with requirement number one for uh, seven does nine assuming that the variable cost will vary in direct proportion to the change in volume prepare flexible budget for production levels of 80 percent 90 percent and 110 percent of normal capacity also determine the predetermined factory overhead rate at each level of volume in both units and direct labor hours now we have presented below are the monthly factory overhead cost budget at normal capacity of 5,000 units or 20,000 direct labor hours and the production and cost data for a month. The predetermined overhead rate is based on normal capacity. So the factory overhead uh, cost budget. Uh, take note that the normal capacity here is 5,000 units or 20,000 direct labor hours. That's the normal capacity. So for the factory overhead cost, we have the fixed uh, components, including depreciation on building and machinery, taxes, insurance on building and machinery, superintendent salaries, supervisors uh, salaries, maintenance wages, total 11,800. Then for the variable cost, including repairs, maintenance of uh, maintenance supplies other supplies payroll taxes small tools so total of two million two thousand 
here we have the total standard factory overhead so here we are going to uh, prepare uh, as required we are going to use uh, the uh, 80% 90% and 110% of normal capacity for our flexible budget so for 80% of 5,000 units being the normal capacity so 80% is 4,000 units 90% is 4,500 units and 110% is 5,500 units so this standard of uh, direct labor hours is uh, 16 uh, thousand uh, the normal uh, capacity hours is 20,000 so at 80 percent 16,000 at 90 percent 18,000 and 110 percent 22,000 direct labor hours so for the budgeted factory uh, overhead which uh, we are now uh, going to prepare a flexible budget for the three production levels. So we have now the uh, budgeted factory overhead. For the fixed cost, we follow 1,200, 500, 500, 3,000, 4,600, and 2,000. For all uh, the capacity levels, we have the total fixed cost for each is 11,800. So as uh, uh, what we consider as fixed cost, it's fixed in total regardless of the capacity level but within the relevant range. So for the variable cost, we have now your repairs. Uh, per direct labor hour, it's uh, two uh, cents. So that's taken by dividing uh, 400 by uh, 20,000 direct labor hours. So we have now uh, 480% or 4,000 uh, units, but 16,000 direct labor hours. Here for repairs, the basis is direct labor hours. So we have uh, 0.02 cents multiplied by 16,000 uh, units. So we now get or 16,000 hours. Repairs cost is 320 at 90%. is 360 at 110%. It's 440 for maintenance supplies we have uh, 15 uh, 0.015 per direct labor hour so again we multiply uh, 0 0.015 by the number of direct labor hours uh, for the next item we have other supplies at point uh, Zero 01 dividing 200 by 20,000 direct labor hours. So you get 0 0.01 per direct labor hour. So remember, our basis here are your standard direct labor hours. For the payroll uh, taxes, again we have 800 divided by 20,000 direct labor hours. So we get 0 0.04 per direct labor hour and uh, for uh, small tools dividing 300 by uh, 20,000 direct labor hours so we get 0 0.015 now with the fixed cost of 11,800 and now we add the total variable cost of uh, 1,600, 1,800, and 2,200, depending upon 
the capacity level. So total variable cost, we have uh, the uh, computation of uh, the uh, contribution uh, margin supposed to be uh, here. Uh, we have the budgeted factory overhead with the fixed and variable. So we have the total uh, factory overhead cost as uh, in our flexible budget. The variable cost per direct labor hour. Now we have the formula in the determination of the variable rates. So we have the predetermined factory overhead rate is 2.76 per unit, 13,800 divided by 5,000 units or 0.69 per direct labor hour. Uh, that's 13,800 divided by 20,000 hours at all different at all levels because the predetermined overhead rate is based on normal capacity. So the total uh, fixed cost at normal capacity of 11,800 and then uh, we will be adding 2,000. Uh, that's at normal capacity. Now the given amount. So we arrive at uh, 2. 76 per unit the predetermined the uh, factory overhead rate no that's supposed to be 2.76 now prepare a, f a flexible budget for uh, production levels of 80 percent 90 percent and 110 percent assuming that variable cost will vary in direct proportion to the change in volume but with the following exceptions hint set up a third category for semi-variable expenses letter a at 110 percent of capacity another supervisor will be needed at salary of 24,000 uh, that's annually so for the factory overhead cost, again, we have based on the number of units and uh, the budgeted uh, factory overhead. Now with the fixed cost, uh, only for taxes and uh, insurance and the uh, superintendent's uh, salary, uh, so we now get the total fixed cost and uh, the semi-variable cost for uh, semi-variable cost depreciation on uh, building and machinery 1,200 and uh, supervisor salaries 4,600 and maintenance wages and uh, repairs so we have the total semi-variable cost. And the variable cost, uh, since uh, we are given other supplies and uh, payroll taxes and small tools and the maintenance supplies. So we have now the total of uh, the variable cost of 1 to 80, 1 for 40, and 1760. The total factory overhead cost we have to uh, divide 1200 by uh, here we have 12,000 divided by 120 months, it's 1000. 300 we are now adding 1200 then 4600 units plus 24000 that's the added uh, salary of the supervisor uh, 24000 divided by 12 months that's uh, 6600 and 
uh, finally for 2,000 plus uh, 10,000 divided by 12 months or 1,167 maintenance wages and finally repairs one fourth of 400 so we now have your variable cost including other supplies payroll taxes small tools and maintenance uh, supplies so we have now your total factory overhead cost uh, for uh, the second uh, case in uh, requirement uh, number two no uh, but anyway we have uh, a b c and d uh, integrated for uh, the uh, requirements in number two okay now flexible budget in seven does ten okay now take note we have this uh, solution for requirement number two for uh, the different uh, cases at uh, the different capacity levels for uh, requirement number two then for uh, next we have uh, seven does ten again we have flexible budget for factory overhead so we have now in uh, requirement number one assuming that variable cost will vary in direct proportion to the change in volume prepare flexible budget for production levels of 80%, 90%, and 110% of normal capacity. Also determine the predetermined factory overhead rate at each level of volume in both units and direct labor hours. So in uh, percent of normal capacity, uh, the normal capacity in units is 10,000. In hours, it's 30,000. So, if you operate at 80% of normal capacity, number of units will be 80% of 10,000, 90%, and 110%. If you base it on the direct labor hours, which is 30,000 times 80%, times 90%, times 110%. So we have now the budgeted uh, factory overhead for the fixed cost uh, given our depreciation 1,800 taxes 750 and then insurance and building and machinery 800 superintendent salary 4,000 400 supervisors salaries for 6,200 and the maintenance wages 1,500 given the total uh, fixed cost uh, for 15,450 at all capacity levels so we have now the variable cost including repairs maintenance supplies, other supplies, payroll taxes, and uh, small tools uh, with the corresponding rate per direct labor hour like uh, repairs. So 600 uh, divided by uh, the total number of uh, direct labor hours. So we get 0.02. Now, at the bottom, you have the explanation. The variable cost per direct labor hour was determined by dividing the amount of each variable cost at normal capacity by 30,000 direct labor hours. So, 600 divided by 30,000 direct labor hours. So, that's uh, 
how we get 0 0.02 and then multiply it by the corresponding number of hours. So in uh, the case of repairs, that will be 0 0.02 times uh, the number of uh, hours. So we have the number of uh, 24 thousand hours so we get 480 and uh, here we have 540 multiplying 0 0.02 by 27,000 directly per hours and last column we have 33,000 hours multiplied by 0 0.02 so again we compute for the rate per variable cost item by uh, dividing the amount of the variable cost total by uh, the normal capacity of 30,000 hours. So here we have the total of the variable cost at 80%. Uh, uh, so 2,520. Uh, that's at 80%. So, uh, you can also get this by multiplying 3,150 by 80%. Then, next column, uh, or you multiply 3,150 by 90%. And the last column by 110%. So we have now the variable cost per direct labor hour. The predetermined factory overhead rate is 1.86 per unit. That's uh, 1.86 per unit. Uh, 18,600 is to be divided by 10,000 units or 0.62 based on the number of direct labor hours at all levels because the predetermined overhead rate is based on normal capacity. So normal capacity was uh, already given. Now the uh, second requirement for uh, 7 does 10. Prepare flexible budget for production levels 80, 90, and 110%. Assuming that variable cost will vary in direct proportion to the change in volume, but with the following exceptions. Set up a third category for semi-variable expenses. At 110% capacity, Another supervisor will be needed at 27,000 annually. At 80%, the repairs expense will drop to one half of the amount at 100% capacity. C. At 90% of uh, capacity, one, one part time maintenance worker earning 9,000 a year will be laid off. And at 110% of capacity, a machine not normally in use and in which no depreciation is normally recorded will be used in production. Its cost was 18,000. It has tenure life and remaining useful or remain a straight line depreciation of uh, given the amount will be taken. So the next requirement for number two at 80 percent, 90 and 110 percent. So we are now going to multiply the number of units is a normal capacity is 10,000 you multiply by 80%, by 90%, and by 110%. So we have now the number of uh, 
units of uh, 8,000. And we have the budgeted factory overhead given based on the capacity level used. So we have now the taxes on uh, building and machinery. So for the fixed cost, we have taxes. Uh, 750 then insurance and building and machinery of uh, 800 and uh, finally superintendent's salary of 440 now assuming that variable cost will vary in direct proportion to the change in volume so the budgeted factory overhead then uh, we have now for the total fixed cost of 5950 then the semi-variable fixed cost for depreciation on building and machinery that's 1800 supervisors salaries of 6200 maintenance supplies are uh, here maintenance Wages equal to 750 and repairs of uh, 300 for the semi-variable cost. So now we have uh, the total semi-variable and fixed cost. Then for the variable cost, we have other supplies of uh, 240 payroll taxes of uh, 960 and the small tools 480 and the maintenance supplies of 360 with the total variable cost so now we have the computations of uh, 1950 uh, adding 1800 plus 18,000 divided by 120 months so we get 1,950 for 6,200 plus uh, 27,000 divided by uh, 12 months so actually we have uh, 12 months no for uh, 18,000 divided by 12 months not 120 months it's uh, 12 months then for uh, uh, 1500 we are going to deduct 9000 divided by 12 months so we now get the uh, result of 750 750 and the last one half times 600 Okay, total factory overhead cost and uh, 17,040, 18, 285, and 21, 315 for uh, 7 dust 10 requirement number 2. Then uh, we have uh, 7 dust 11, the overhead application rate for... 7 does 11. Okay, the company uses job order cost system and standard cost. It manufactures one product whose standard cost follows. So we have the standard cost for materials 20 yards at 0.90 per yard. So you get 18 direct labor per hour at 9 per hour. Uh, 36 total factory overhead per unit the ratio variable cost to fixed cost is 3 is to 1 so we now get 32 and uh, the total unit cost is 86 so now you see the components materials 18 per unit direct labor 36 per unit and total factory overhead per unit uh, is equal to uh, 32 so we have now the uh, 
total unit force uh, equal to 86. Okay, the standards are based on normal capacity of 2,400 direct labor hours. Actual activity for October follows. Materials purchase 18,000 yards at 0.92 per yard. Then we have the materials used 9,500 yards. And direct labor 2,100 times 9.15 per hour. And total overhead of 500 units actually produced. Compute the variable and fix uh, overhead rates per unit. Compute the variable and fix overhead rates per direct labor hour. And determine the total fixed factory overhead based on normal capacity so the total uh, factory overhead per unit is uh, given at 32 the variable component is uh, 24 and the fixed factory overhead per unit is 8 now we have the variable cost is 3 fourths times 32 so we now get uh, the rate of 24. Then for the fixed factory overhead uh, per unit, it's uh, given at 8 uh, multiplying 1 4 times 32. So the factory overhead per unit is 32. Then for the variable factory overhead rate per direct labor hour, 24 divided by 4 labor hours per unit. So we now get uh, direct labor hour, uh, variable factory overhead rate per direct labor hour is 6. Uh, so we now have uh, fixed factory overhead rate per direct labor hour is 8 divided by 4 per direct labor hour per unit. So it's 2. So the total fixed overhead of 2 times 2,400 direct labor hours or 8 times 600 units. The ratio variable cost to fixed cost of 3 is to 1. So therefore, if you add 3 and uh, 1, that will be 4. That's why for the variable cost, we have 3 fourths and the fixed cost is 1 fourth. For uh, the total fixed factory overhead based on normal capacity. Then for number 12, the overhead application rate, uh, the company uses job order cost system and standard cost. It manufactures one product with standard cost of materials 15, direct labor is 20. And factory overhead per unit, the ratio variable cost to fixed cost is 2 is to 1. It's uh, 24, so the cost per unit is 65. Standards are based on normal capacity of 2,700 direct labor hours. Actual activity for March. So materials uh, purchase 13,500 yards at 1.55 per yard. Materials use 13,000 yards. Direct labor 2,620 hours. Total factory overhead is 1,300 units. Actually, Produced. So, number one, compute the variable and fix factory overhead rates per unit. Number two, a variable and fix overhead rates per direct labor hour and total fixed overhead based on normal capacity. So, for the answers, total factory overhead uh, per unit is uh, the variable 
uh, it's equal to 16 while the fixed is equal to 8 the ratio the variable cost to fixed cost is 2 is to 1 therefore we have the variable cost of 2 thirds so we get 16 and the fixed cost is 8 then number two requirement is uh, compute the variable and fix overhead rates based on labor hours. So we have the variable overhead rate per direct labor hour uh, 16 divided by 2 direct labor hours per unit. So we get 8. Then the fixed is 8 divided by 2. Uh, we get 4. And the requirement in number three, total fixed factory overhead based on normal capacity. So we have the total fixed factory overhead of four times 2,700 direct labor hours or eight times 1,350 units or 10,800. Now we go to uh, the mini case in uh, here in uh, the problem. Flexible budgeting, performance uh, measurement, and ethics. Uh, the company produces a single type of small motor. The bookkeeper does not have an in-depth understanding of accounting principles. Prepare the following performance report with the help of the production manager in a conversation with the sales manager the production manager was overheard saying you sales guys really messed up our may performance and it's only because production did such a great job controlling costs that we are in in even worse shape so we have now the flexible budget per unit, uh, it's 25, the actual resource, then we have the master budget at 50,000 units. Now given the variance of 125,000 unfavorable because the actual resource is uh, less than... Uh, the budget so we have uh, 45,000 units times uh, 25 then we have the variable expenses at 4.50 per unit so given the total variable expense and sales minus variable expense equals the contribution margin and then we did that the fixed factory overhead uh, and the fixed selling and administrative expense giving us income from operations and the variance is unfavorable. Do you agree with the production manager that the manufacturing area did a good job of controlling costs? And uh, we have now to prepare flexible budget for uh, Montevideo manufacturing expenses at the following activity levels. 45,000 units, 50,000, and 55,000. Prepare a revised performance report using the most appropriate flexible budget from number two above. So, number one, do you agree with the production manager? No, the production manager is not accurate when he says that manufacturing did a good job in controlling costs. This is an apple uh, to oranges comparison because master budget unit volume was 50,000, whereas actual results were based on the production and sales of only 45,000 units. One would expect the cost variances to be uh, favorable given the types of comparison. 
So, in number 2, we are going to prepare flexible budget at 3 uh, activity levels. So, we have now your sales and the variable expenses uh, per unit based on direct materials uh, given. So, you multiply this by each of the activity levels with uh, direct labor with variable factory overhead and variable selling and administrative so the total variable expense of 25 minus 12 is the contribution margin of 13 per unit and uh, per activity level then we deduct the fixed expenses for uh, each of the activity levels, we have uh, 100,000 for the fixed factory overhead expense. And uh, we have uh, four fixed selling and admin. It's 150,000. Uh, That's uh, based on uh, the definition of fixed expense that it will remain constant regardless of the activity level as long as we, it's within the relevant range. So the total of uh, the fixed expenses deducted from the contribution margin, we have the income from operations. So finally, we have your uh, uh, requirement number three, Preparing a revised performance report based on the flexible budget. Uh, we have the actual results and the flexible budget already based on number two. So we have now four direct materials uh, given with the actual results and the flexible budget. And uh, we have now your direct uh, materials, direct labor, a variable factory overhead, variable selling and admin, the total variable expense. So we have the contribution margin of uh, 13 per unit. Then we deduct the fixed factory overhead for uh, and as well as selling. So the difference we have the income from operations showing an unfavorable amount of 34,000 because you have now 335,000 uh, and the uh, income of 301,000. So we now have the difference of uh, 34,000. Uh, comparing the actual results, it's only 301,000. The budget is 335,000. That's why it's unfavorable. And number four, now what is your response to the production manager's uh, claim? Uh, in number four, manufacturing did not do a good job controlling costs. The variances for direct materials, direct labor and variable factory overhead totaled 26,000, which is unfavorable. The variances for fixed factory overhead was 5,000 favorable, but that was probably due to budgeting uh, misestimate. And uh, number five, assume that you have just uh, being hired as the new accountant, you observe that the production manager is about to receive a large bonus based on the favorable materials, labor, and factory overhead uh, variances indicated the flexible budget prepared by the bookkeeper using the IMA statement of ethical Professional practice as your guide, what standards, if any, apply to your responsibilities in this matter. 
So the accountancy responsibilities uh, using the INA statement of the ethical professional practice include under competence, provides decision support information and recommendations that are accurate, clear, concise, and timely. And under credibility, communicate information fairly and objectivity, disclose the relevant information that could reasonably be expected to influence an intended user's understanding of the report's analysis or uh, recommendations. Okay, so that's all for uh, Chapter 7. Uh, so I hope that you will uh, review all of this. This is the third uh, YouTube uh, discussions that we have. Okay.